हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट नॉन इन्वेसिव वेंटिलेशन सिस्टम स्पेसिफिकली बाईपैप वी डिस्कस वेरी वेरी बेसिक बट मच इंपॉर्टेंट सेटिंग्स टू डू विद द बाईपैप एंड आई पर्सनली फील दिस शुड बी नोन बाय ईच एंड एवरी मेडिको और पैरामेडिकोस सो डोंट वेस्ट टाइम लेट स्पीक इन बाईपैप मीन्स बाई लेवल पॉजिटिव एयरवे प्रेशर एज नेम इट सजेस्ट it gives two type of pressure during the whole respiratory cycle during inspiration it is ipap and during expiration it is epap now we go through the concept of ventilation normally ventilation means to and fro movements of the air we can simply say it is a passage of the air bi directionally same in the respiratory system we can see here during inspiration atmospheric pressure is 760 mm of mercury but inside the lungs it is 757 so air come inside inside towards the lungs while during expiration atmospheric pressure is same at 760 but due to more pressure in the lungs which is at 763 air goes outside from the lungs so from from this we can say ventilation is directly proportional to the pressure difference what we say in medical terminology it's pressure support so here mv means your ventilation is directly proportional to ps ps means pressure support or delta p means difference between your ipap and epap now this is much enough for theoretical aspect we should know how to set this pressures in different conditions of the patient it directly correlates with patient's blood levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide first of all let's see the normal levels normal level for arterial co2 is around 40 and for the o2 it's around 88 now let's know how to manage them at their normal levels if co2 level is high means air is not going outside from the lungs properly so patient is not properly ventilating it is called hypoventilation and exactly opposite to it if co2 level is low means air is going outside from the lungs very easily and fluently so patient is highly ventilating it is called hyperventilation so we can simply say that level of co2 and ventilation are inversely proportional to each other here we also know that ventilation is direct directly proportional to the pressure difference so with this two facts ventilation is directly proportional to the pressure difference and level of co2 is inversely proportional to the ventilation so we can simplify say that level of co2 is inversely proportional to the pressure difference the main important part you have to remember is this again level of co2 is inversely proportional to the pressure difference again level of co2 is inversely proportional to the pressure difference and same way if o2 level is low in the blood so we can assume either air coming from the atmosphere to the lung carrying the less oxygen means your fio2 is less or part of the lungs are not functioning not working properly to convey the oxygen towards the blood means either airways are collapsed or fluid retention inside the alveoli so to improve the o2 level first fio2 can be increased here here in low flow settings we can say we can increase fio2 up to 60% and to further improve the oxygenation we can increase the epap level so the blood o2 level is directly proportional to fio2 and it is also directly proportional to epap this is also very important thing and you have to remember level of blood o2 is directly proportional to fio2 and also directly proportional to epap still confused don't get panic there are no worries if you don't understand all these theoretical aspects let's make it very simple if you are very confused with all these things just remember two simple things first if co2 is high increase your pressure difference and second if o2 is low first increase fio2 up to 60% and then still o2 is low increase your 
EPEB. I think that's very simple for all and very easy to remember. Again, if CO2 is high, increase your pressure difference. And if O2 is low, increase FiO2 up to 60%. Still you want to increase oxygenation, increase your EPEP. Now, remember these two things and apply it in real-time patient scenarios. Let's do some exercises. So stretch your brain and be ready. Let's begin with the first case. Here we can see IPEP is 10, EPEP is 5. So current pressure difference is 10 minus 5 is 5. Here FiO2 is 40%. So it is lower side. Means if we require, we can increase it. Now first see PCO2 level. Here it is 70, 70. Means it is more. So we have to decrease this level. So we have to increase the pressure difference. So our new pressure difference should be 7. Now see PO2 level. Here it is 60 means it is lower side. So we can increase our FiO2 to 50% from the current level which is 40%. So new FiO2 is 50% as we are increasing the FiO2 here there is no change in EPEP. So new required pressure difference is 7. So we have to increase IPEP to 12. So we can make the difference of 7. That's all. We have solved the case number 1. Now the second one. Here we can see IPEP is 20. EPEP is just 5. So current pressure difference is 20 minus 5 is 15. Here FiO2 is 50%. So it is lower side, means we can increase it if required. Now first see PCO2 level, here it is 40, 40, means it is almost normal. So we don't have to change the pressure difference. So our new pressure difference should be same as the older one, means 15, 1, 5. Now see PO2 level, here it is 40, 40, means it is very low. So we can increase our FiO2 to 60% from the 50%. Now, new FiO2 is 60% and no change in EPAP. So new required pressure difference is 15. So no change in IPAP and EPAP. It's okay. That's all for the case. Now, assume in the same case, if with all these newer parameters, still your PO2 is 40 after at least one or two hours of therapy you go through the again abg report and analysis your po2 is 40 again there is no improvement so fio2 is already 60 percent means it's a maximum limit for the low flow settings so to increase your po2 we should increase epap level which was 5 we can increase it up to 7 so here we are increasing epap to 7 but we want the pressure difference of 15 as same. We don't want to change our pressure difference. So to maintain the difference, we have to increase the IPEP also. It should be 22. So finally, our newer sweatings are FiO2 60%, IPEP 22, EPEP 7. That's all. I think now it is easy for all of you. Now third case. And probably the last one. I am not going to bore you much. So please be continue. Here we can see IPEP is 18. EPEP is 8. So current pressure difference is 18 minus 8 is 10. Here FiO2 is 40%. So it is lower side. Now first see PCO2 level. It is 60. Means it is more. So to decrease it, we will increase the pressure difference. So our new pressure difference should be 12. Now see PO2 level. Here it is 110. Means it is higher than the normal limits. So we have to decrease FiO2 first. But see here it is already lower than the 60%. So we have to decrease EPEP level. It is 8 here. We can make it 6. So our new parameters are FiO2 40%, EPEP 6 and new required pressure difference is 12 but which is already there with the newer epep settings so there is no change in ipep i think that's completes our setting purpose 
आई होप यू ऑल अंडरस्टैंड दिस वेरी वेल एक्चुअली इट्स वेरी सिंपल थिंग द मोर एंड मोर यू अप्लाई दिस एंड प्रैक्टिस दिस इमंग द पेशेंट्स यू विल गेट मच मोर कॉन्फिडेंस फॉर दिस काइंड ऑफ पर्पसिस सो फ्रेंड्स दैट्स ऑल फॉर टूडेज टॉक होप दैट यू ऑल आर नाउ एबल टू डू द बेजिक सेटिंग्स ऑफ बाई पेप एंड एडजस्टमेंट्स एज पर योर पेशेंट्स रिक्वायरमेंट थैंक यू सो मच वी प्रे फॉर द गुड हेल्थ ऑफ ऑल ऑफ यू प्लीज डू शेयर लाइक और कॉमेंट ऑन द वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब टू अवर चैनल टिल देन गुड बाय थिंक लेस डू मोर एंड बी हैप्पी फॉर बींग हेल्थी